Well, here we go. Back again. It's me, um, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Fast as 30 minutes in broadcast. While I continue to make my light adjustment and <laughs> to try to see you guys out there, you know, it's not always easy, but uh, it happens from time to time. There, you see, y'all got to forgive me today, but there is a joy of expectancy inside of me. There is a highway made through the wilderness. I know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is something about this morning in my life, in your life. I'm t I don't want no, don't bring me a preaching feel good message. Don't want none of the goop a lot. You keep your emotional uh, self uh, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> your, your, yourself, whatever it is, you know, that when you require to get it, you just can get it because you keep that for yourself. <laughs> keep whatever yourself for yourself. This it's not sounding brass and tingling cymbals. You're still playing church game. Roll out the barrel. No more of that stuff. See, what's scaring me and terrifying me is God bringing this word alive. I, I know that it is appointed unto man who wants to die, and after that, the judgment. But this word really is a lie. I don't know how to explain it to y'all except the best way I can explain it. And this is not the fear of the walking dead or nothing like that. But it's like living on earth as a dead man alive knowing what's after the death in being here trying to tell y'all to experience something that I know that you're going to have to face one day as well as myself. And I'm trying my best to explain y'all and me how we got to face what none of us completely knows except what God's word declares. You see. So let's go back and look at the declaration of God's word. Fast as 30 minutes in broadcast. James chapter number 5. Prophet Johnson, I don't want to go back there today. Well, we are. Okay, here we go. Uh, James chapter number 5. Verse number 1. It's where we stopped off last night, got a little whatever. Bonkers. Go to now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you, for your miseries, okay, that shall come upon you. Galatians 5 and 22, and this is where all the Christians have their little five and dime service, you know, men in black, women in white. They do this right here, fruit of the spirit. We want you to speak from the fruit of the spirit of joy. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Now wait. You see that? That's in the Bible, right? 
that's in the Bible. But if I looked at it again, he's telling you there's no law against love. There's no law against peace. There's no law against joy, goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperance. He said there's no law against that. There's not supposed to be a law against it, is it? But there is, through the devil, laws that he tried to implement against it. He tried to use envy against it. He tried to use jealousy against it. Hatred against it. They say that there's no law against goodness. And I tell God, I say, Lord, I understand what it means, and I have to explain it to the people. But in the natural realm, world, it don't matter how good you are. If you're riding down the road and the police see you and you black, white people, I have to tell y'all this because it's true. I have to tell y'all this. There he go again. It don't matter. I have to tell y'all this. And he pulls you over, and he targets you and beats you because you black. They said there's no law against goodness. There's no law against meekness. But there's a law against black. What God is saying to tell you is that in the realm of the spirit, let's leave the natural. There's nothing a devil in hell that can do when you got this inside of you. Hey, glory! Woo! I felt that Pentecostal shout. Hey, glory, remember? And I found out this is true. He got mad because of the law of love. Because of the law of peace and joy. And had, I had to, all of those was in me. That's been in me all my life. This is all I know. So the enemy get, gets mad when you have these attributes. So he tried to do something to frustrate meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. In they that are Christ, those of us that belong to Jesus Christ, okay, have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. So what do we do? We crucify the flesh daily to fight against the affection, the desires of this world. It doesn't happen just overnight. It's a daily fight. And you've got the best representor in the whole whatever, whatever. This God stuff, Lord forgive me, I didn't mean to say it like this, but this God stuff that y'all playing with, this God stuff is playing out. <laughs> y'all hear me? What do you mean this God stuff? Y'all, people are playing with this God stuff, this church God stuff. What's going to happen? is that this God stuff going to come to life. The real God of his word is going to move and get rid of this God stuff they playing with. This little byword and pastime and a little here and a little there and a little hit and a little down and a little up. You know what I mean? People. It's like I told them other folks. On the other night, some of y'all, you you go to church just to have a place to be buried. That's why you go to the Baptist church, that Methodist church. That's why your uncle does them, your mama does them, granny does them. They're not going to leave. They can't. The only people that go to other churches and go to Abundant Life or some Christian center they go to those churches because they don't have a graveyard in the back. Those are the people that are scattered, younger people that are growing up. 
The old establishment, 50 years and older, they already got their burial black background playing at the church. Some of them done picked out their burial lot. Pastor, you know I want you to just light me right here. Light me right here by Edwards. Edwards. I just saw something in the spirit that way that y'all see me jerk. I just saw something. Okay. What did you see, Prophet Johnson? Wasn't what I thought it was. All right. What did you think it was? Um, thought it was a devil and the demon peeping, but I caught it in the spirit so fast until it had to leave. And so it, it's gone. All right. This is for real. I'm not kidding y'all. I mean, you saw me with that little jerk just now. You check that thing in the spirit. You rewind this video. You check that thing in the spirit. See me look? I got to check in my spirit. My heart went into warfare because I was about to rebuke and bind, you know. Prophet Johnson, yeah, this stuff is real, y'all. This stuff is real. So, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Now, brothers and sisters, this is not hard to do. It becomes a daily part of your life, living in the spirit, walking in the spirit. All it is is simply living a righteous life, having your mind stayed up on the Lord, meditating upon him day and night. People used to get so religious until it was so bad. And I had this problem. <clears throat> they had the problem with me, but not with the person that I was with. Because the person that I was with already had a family. And th the problem that they had with me was that they were saying, you are so holy. You live so right. How can you walk in the spirit so that you won't fulfill the lust or the desires of the flesh? And then when you go in, this is true now, when you go, everything I'm telling y'all true, when you go and you have to smooch, uh, don't you have to get in the flesh then? <laughs> Wait a minute, now, hold on. <coughs> Y'all excuse me, I'm going to make it, Lord knows I am. This, 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 that stuff come from this military, y'all. I'm telling y'all, we went through hell over there in that war. We went through hell. So they said, well, don't you, well, what, don't you, in the, let me tell you something. Don't y'all think God got common sense? Don't you think that God know that you are flesh? Don't you, why do you think God gave you the desire? Why did you see it's one husband, one wife? You are just as much as spirit as you are flesh when you are married. And marriage is honorable and all, and the bad undefiled. It is beautiful. Help me preach it, Holy Ghost. I'm so tired, God. Not on the air. So it is glorious in his sight when male and female procreate and copulate. It is to bring forth his plan. The child is to come forth through blood and water. The same thing that came out of Jesus Christ when they pierced him on the cross. So his death was the reverse for life. You see, and they used to say, how can Prophet Johnson smooch? And I would just have to look at him and say, bow, wow, wow, yippee, yoni, yippee, yay. Bow, wow, yippee, yoni, yippee, yoni, yippee, yay. Who let them dogs out? Roof, 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 roof. <laughs> you see, because I'm a human. You see, and I'm a real one. I'm a flesh being like you are. 
We are spirits with a soul that lives in a body. So God knows he's got to give us something to stir us like never before. I'm, I'm lost somewhere, y'all. I got to get my mind back in the focus, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we're, we're in Galatians chapter number five. I'm, I'm finishing up here, but um, and I know I got to go to uh, the book of um, where is that at? James, I believe it is. So we're gonna go to the book of James after Galatians chapter number five. Right now, y'all, what's happening to me right now is that I'm in a I'm in a, a spiritual <laughs> jitter, and, and I'm, I'm having, it's almost like a person that done drunk a pot of coffee, and he's having to come down from this caffeine thing. That's what's happening to me in the spirit. I'm having to really, literally count down and fake it in front of y'all because I just almost had an explosion. I almost had a spiritual breakdown live on the air in front of y'all. And if y'all see that, I'll never hear the end of it. Because y'all to be like, he is so pitiful. Even to the point to some of y'all might send an offering for the first time in your life to this broadcast and not listen to the devil tell you not to. We're in Galatians 5, but we're going back to James because James is where we want to go. And um, I, I got to get out of Galatians. I just want to finish that. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous. This is, James, this is Galatians 5 and 26 in clothing this part. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. <laughs> See, this is why I keep telling y'all that, and y'all don't believe me. See, and I'm not trying to prove nothing to y'all, but I'm being honest with y'all. I am in a place now to where it is hurting me. The word is literally affecting me. Like you... So when I see the thing that let us not be desirous of vain glory, I tell you that he will not share his glory, Jesus, with another. That's man. I can't explain this no more. God will move everything out of your way that will try to take his glory. I don't have time for no examples. Here it goes. The little boy, Johnny, want a pair of roller skates. God tell Johnny, Johnny, I want you to go cut Miss Susie May uh, uh, dry, dry spoon. Uh, the weather, I, I got that too much. Su Susan May uh, uh, sun dry. Go cut Miss Susan May sun dry's yard. The roller skates cost the little boy uh, twenty-five dollars. Uh, Miss Susan made the sun dry is gonna pay a uh, little Johnny seven dollars. All right, Johnny go over there and cut the grass. He obeys God. Johnny said, "I got seven dollars." He need how much? Seven. Thirteen dollars. Is that right, y'all? He need about thirteen dollars, right? I think that's it. Eighteen. I don't know. Eight, Ten dollars. Ten. Eight, Eighteen dollars. <laughs> I can count if y'all stop messing me up. So he need eighteen dollars more. I'm show you how this works. So Lil Johnny then decide to go over there to Mr. Bill Walker or uh, Hammer Nose's house. Mr. Bill Walker Hammer Nose got some pigs over there in the little farm. He tell little Johnny, you know, Johnny go over there and clean out the little stalls and. Give Johnny another $7. That's how much? 14 I got to get off these odd numbers. 
That's fourteen dollars. How much you got left? Fifteen, ten, ten, twenty-five. So he got eleven dollars. He got to make right. Here's the deal. Little Johnny goes home. He walks in the house. He's happy. Mommy, Daddy, I've got fourteen dollars towards my skates. And then Johnny's little sister say, "Well, Johnny, how much do you need more?" Johnny said, I need only $11. I think Prophet Johnson got it right. And she said, oh, well, Johnny, I can give you five. And Johnny said, oh, great, great. Daughter said, uh-uh, uh-uh, oh, no, no. You helping little Johnny. You ready to get some glory. So God said, no. Then the dad and the mama say, oh, well, we'll give you another six or seven, however many did just Prophet Johnson miss it? And God said, oh, no. No, no. And, and Johnny says, no, mommy, no, daddy. God wants me to do it myself because he don't want you to get the glory. You see how the story works. So what did Johnny do? He gets up and he has $11 he has to make. Johnny doesn't take the money. He gets up to go to school the next day. And while he's on his way to school, little Johnny looks on the side of the curb and there's a brand spanking new $20 bill sitting there waiting on him. He picks it up and God said, now, do you see my glory? Do you see how it works? He always gives you more than what you ask for. He always take you beyond the call of duty. God never! Help me go. He never gives you less. He always gives you more. He never, ever gives you less. If you get less of anything, trust me, and you don't ask him to do it, and it's not enough, it's not God, something else done provided for you. Okay? You got to remember. You got to make sure that you close the doors in your life that leads you to nowhere. You see, close the doors in your life that leads you to nowhere in life. More ability to pick the right one in your life, more is the ability to pick the right person in your life Okay? Then the ability to walk away from the wrong person in your life. You got more ability to pick the right person in your life than you do to walk away from the wrong person that's in your life. And that's all there is to it. God knows that there are going to be people that's going to come in and their primary focus is going to be what? To stop your progress. Uh, I can't, I'm trying to keep up with this this here, and I keep getting lost. James chapter number five. Let's get back over there. I want to reset and revisit my notes. Hebrews, James five. Go to now, you rich man. Weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. There's Something else I want to read. 
And something else I want to show y'all. And this is what I want to tell you. Rich folks, you think your money keep you company, don't you? I know it keep y'all company. I know it keeps anybody company. You ought to see the preachers on TV, prosperity preachers bragging and boasting about all that money. Your riches are corrupt. And your garments are moth-eaten. Lord, forgive us. Help us. We won't get another chance. This is the only chance that we are ever going to get. You see. Remember, a lot of people talking about being tired, being alone, being by themselves, or whatever. Listen to this. You cannot be lonely if you like the person that you are alone with. <laughs> Don't go around talking about you lonely. You can't be lonely when you like who you are alone with. I got to hurry up because my time is moving fast. The minister just going to run me out of here. He goes on to say in verse number 3, James your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. I talked about this the other night. And it shall be a witness against you. Let me read verse number three. We're in the book of James. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. Now, let me tell you something. Imagine gold and silver, and you know gold and silver don't hardly get no rust on it too quick, right? And I held it for so long, the body done got rusted. They got that rusty money. That rust is going to jump off of them, that money, and that rust is going to turn into a man or a spirit or a witness. And that rust going to get up and say, yeah. That's him. You the one that was greedy. You the one that didn't give me to no poor. That Russ is going to say, yeah, that's the liar. That's the thief. Your money is going to testify. Yeah, you stole me. You stole me from them poor children in the projects of Mississippi. You stole that welfare money down out of the Delta, and it didn't come off the Queen Anne. Your money is going to testify against you. It's going to be a witness. Fire of the blood. Let me show y'all this. God is setting y'all up for the glory that's about to be revealed. Okay? Yeah, start to finish. There it is. <laughs> Your gold and silver is cankered. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you. Here it is. I'm telling you, everything you're going to deal with is going to be fire and blood. And shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Your gold and your silver is going to get teeth. And it's going to bite your A. And it's going to eat your brain. It's going to eat your eyes. And it's going to burn you while it's eating you. You ever heard people say that money burning their hand? <laughs> you, ever, you, ever, you ever get a, my mama used to say, you got to go spend that little hot dollar. <laughs> you know, you got a little hot dollar. A hot dollar, get a pack of nail laters, an OJ, and a honey bun. That's back in those days, the 70s. You understand? I better close this out. Otherwise, I might get a cold shoulder and not a hot dollar. We're going to pick this up tomorrow. He goes on to say, 
the rust of them shall be a witness against you. That hot dollar is going to burn that eight. Yeah, I see it. It shall, Prophet Johnson, I said it. It shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Don't burn that donkey. Switch the language. You have heaped treasures together for the last days. You don't understand what the last days are, do you? I done told these people. They are dying. They are dying. And they going to die. And you leaving this junk to these ball of confusion, temptation children, and plantation children, and no demonstration children, and y'all know what they doing? They leaving y'all all of this junk children. Them people, them mothers and daddies, 80 and 70 and 80, they think they going to keep living. That man got junk outside his house. He got chickens and, and metal. He, they think they going to keep living. Get rid of the junk because you're going to die. They are. And they're going to leave it to a bunch of hellacious children that's going to get rid of it and part of that money up. That's my time. We got to go, y'all. Brothers and sisters, y'all pray for us. Thank you for your time. That's my time. Repeat out the mention, Lord Jesus. Say, Father, I'm a sinner. Say, I believe that Jesus died for me and rose again. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Forgive me for my sins. And I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, guys, that's it for me. Things go right. We'll see you tomorrow night. If not, you'll get a repeat. Y'all have a good day. Love you too. Bye.